Young bro, and I'm Omir USA here, and today we are going to be going over revolver fundamentals. I consider the main three fundamentals of a revolver to be sights, grip, and trigger. If your fundamentals with a revolver are not squared away, you will have trouble shooting a revolver well, especially this J-frame, because J-frame size wheel guns are not forgiving at all with poor fundamentals due to its short barrel length, unlike this full-size Dan Lesson 715 revolver with a 6-inch barrel that is a bit more forgiving. If your grip is not good, that can mess up your trigger control and it can prevent you from pulling the trigger straight to the rear. You have to have a good grip or you're going to pull your trigger to the sides. Like if you hit your freaking thumb, that could cause you to pull one side or the other or down. So my grip normally is I have a little bit of room between my trigger finger and my thumbs. So if your grip is not good on your J-frame size revolver, it can definitely affect your accuracy and your sights as far as sight alignment goes. As far as trigger, be deliberate and just pull and follow through. Now I'm very used to a double action trigger on a revolver and a semi-automatic pistol like this Beretta 92FS because my very first handguns were a Taurus 9-shot 22LR revolver and then my old Bruneton Breda 92FS. What I mean by being deliberate with the trigger is like so. I don't think that you guys should stage the trigger like so, very slowly back to the rear. I think that you guys should just be deliberate and follow through and be very consistent while you're doing it. Like this. Now, again, that doesn't mean you have to jerk the trigger or anything like that. Just be very consistent with the trigger pull and the trigger press. Another reason why I do not suggest being very slow on the trigger and just slowly pulling back is because if you pull on it just slightly and you let the trigger all the way up, then your timing is going to be out of whack like this. See, I just let it up fully and now I have to turn the cylinder to make sure it's back into its timing. That's why I don't recommend that. Just be very deliberate with the trigger pull. And that's why I'm glad that my first two handguns were a Brennan 2 fs and a Taurus 9-shot 22-hour revolver. Because I'm so used to the double action trigger on a semi-auto and a revolver. And I know a lot of YouTubers do not talk about being deliberate with the trigger. They're always talking about staging the trigger. Like so, again. You know, just being very slow and consistent with the trigger. I'm telling you, just pull that trigger and be very deliberate and consistent. You know, you guys are probably wondering, you know, how am I shooting all those tight groups? It's because I'm being very deliberate with the trigger pull and I'm not staging it. I'm just pulling straight through. So one reason why I'm so good at being very deliberate with the trigger on double action is because, you know, I've been shooting double action pistols for years. You know, so I'm very used to that heavy trigger pull. Like so. You know, and that's why I'm able to shoot so well with this. And I'm telling you, this is a lot heavier as far as the trigger pull than that on double action. Or even the Dan Wesson. The Dan Wesson's trigger pull has to be a few pounds lighter than this J-frame. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so, young brother. You know, a lot of people try to stage them because they've been shooting semi-autos for a long time. With the revolver, you really pull through. Let the trigger return spring do its job. Push the trigger back. Forward. You don't have to take your finger all the way off the trigger. You can try to stay with it. But when you do pull the trigger, be deliberate in your action and consistent as you pull it back, concentrating on your sights the whole time. And I had to teach him this because, you know, he didn't really know that with the revolvers. And I remember when we had the SP-101 and we brought it out shooting, that you were not shooting very well with it. And a few times when you were pulling the trigger, you thought it was so heavy that you know you were pulling on the trigger and then you freaking stopped halfway and you had to reset the timing yeah because i was shooting it like it's a semi-auto yeah and so with semi-autos you can kind of take them real slow back and let it eventually fall with the revolver that's going to mess with the action and that's going to stop you from actually firing around down range when you want to shoot yeah but it's going to mess with the timing so pull the trigger consistent and firmly back and let's just follow through let the trigger spring do its job, pushing back and bring your finger back forward and then pull the trigger for the next one. The biggest part for me is doing that correctly and keeping my sights on target the whole time. 
Now by you doing this and double action always, you guys, if you're practicing with a gun like this, a J-frame with a 13 or 14 or 15 pound trigger pull, your trigger finger also is going to get very strong. You know, I know it's hard for you sometimes to go from a striker fired pistol to a DASA pistol or a revolver. The revolver is where I notice it the most because you guys have probably noticed a lot of our shooting with revolvers, we do a lot of the shooting in double action only. We don't go thumb in the hammer back to take it to single action, which some channels do. That does help your accuracy a little bit, but as far as using the pistol in a real world situation, I just don't think that's relevant. You're gonna be all double action. Yeah. Now, if you're 50 yards away, if you have that ability, obviously, to thumb the hammer back in a single action, go ahead. And then, you know, it's a very light, crisp trigger pull. All right, when I first started shooting revolvers, my grip was not very good. I'll give you an example. I was shooting it something like this. <laughs> so obviously, if you can see this in the video cam, obviously this thumb is completely in the way of the trigger pull, right? But I'm trying to do kind of a modified thumbs forward like I'm shooting a semi-auto. So I had to learn to kind of wrap and tuck my thumbs, you can either trap them like this. And that's the way I recommend doing it. Which gives you still pretty good control up here at the top of the grip. So the pistol's recoil is, is pretty well controlled because your hand's up here at the top. Wrap your other hand around with the fingers and trap it like that. And that leaves your trigger finger free to get that full trigger pull. Now another important note about this is you want your fingers to be flat on top of your other hand. You don't want them to be, like show them what I was telling you not to do a few days ago. Uh, for some odd reason I was tucking this finger like almost pointing it. Show them the other side of your hand. Now the bad thing about this is that while you're pulling it in double action, you could get some friction with your trigger finger and this finger right here when you're pulling the trigger. So that's why you go flat, show them flat now on the other side. So when you're flattening it out, you're not going to get any friction right there. But previously you were having some trouble and I didn't really notice it during the time when you were shooting it, but afterwards I know I tried to help you and tell you how to fix your grip. Yeah, so I'm still working on it a little bit, but I think I find it best if I trap my thumbs together and kind of free that whole area up for the trigger pull. And that's what I do too, and that's basically what you've done is you've taken my technique, right? Yeah, but notice my hand is high back strap there which is yeah. helping control the recoil and this gun you guys to be honest with full house 357 magnums it doesn't have any recoil at all it's yeah. pretty amazing we're gonna have a new shooting video coming out with the Dan Wesson 715 since it's been back from the gunsmiths at Dan Wesson they seem to have done a good job with it anyway that video will be coming out and you're right it handles the full house 357 magnum rounds very well very little felt recoil in a revolver of this size it's the only one I have it's the only one I have to compare to but I would imagine the Smith & Wessons would be very similar yeah but there is actually a substantial weight difference between the 6 inch 686 and this one right here there's about a 5 ounce difference so there's a little bit more metal material definitely in this Dan Wesson compared to the Smith & Wesson 686 or 686 And plus. I think it's basically in the full shroud that's down here along with the amount of extra steel up here on the top of the frame. So the top of the frame here on the Dan Wesson is a lot thicker than any Smith & Wesson uh, revolver out there, right young brother? Yeah. And I know you've pointed out how large and thick the hammer is on the Dan Wesson. And the knurling on it is just amazing. Yeah. So anyway, those are the major differences between the Dan Wesson and the Smith & Wesson revolvers that I'm interested in looking at. It's been a learning opportunity for me, guys. You know that this is my first main revolver in over 20 years. So I had to relearn all the revolver etiquette and how to properly handle a revolver and techniques on how to shoot a revolver correctly. That way I wasn't thumbing the hammer back and shooting from single action all the time. I just think the correct way to do it is from double action. Is that going to increase the size of your groups? Yes. But is it going to make the revolver shoot correctly the way you're probably going to shoot it if you need to? I think that's true too. Well, I don't necessarily think it's going to increase your group size all that much. You know, if you're used to the double action, like I had proven in the first video with this gun, you know, you can shoot a one inch size group with five rounds out of this if you are used to the double action trigger pull. 
Yeah, you're capable of shooting groups like that. I'm not. <laughs> and, you know, that's the truth. At this point, I'm not. With the revolver, I'm still working on that skill, and it is a skill. So if you do go out and get a revolver, maybe you watch the videos and you've got five or six semi-autos at home and you decide that you want to try a revolver, be patient with it. It takes time. Hopefully these two videos that you put together, Young Beretta, will help. I think if people watch the videos, they'll get some technique ideas of how to properly shoot the revolver, how to take care of it, how to open the cylinder, how to close the cylinder, you know, by using the crane, how to set the timing correctly and make sure that your cylinder is properly locked up. You know, these things will help you in learning how to shoot a revolver. I find them fun, guys. You know, they're fun to shoot, just like a 1911 is. I really enjoy my 1911s. Completely different than this, of course. But it's another pistol that you have to concentrate and learn how to shoot it correctly. And it's definitely another skill set. Yeah. Knowing yeah. how to use a revolver correctly. Yeah. It's not a Glock. It's not a 1911. It's not a Walther PPQ or an HK VP9. It's different. And you need to approach it differently and concentrate on those fundamentals, right? Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. We hope that you learned a couple things from this. And, you know, if you're already really good at shooting a revolver, obviously this video is not talking to you. It's about people that have limited experience with revolvers, and we're just trying to help them by showing them some techniques and things that they can use if they want to get into a revolver. The biggest thing, and it happened to me, guys, so if it can happen to me, it can happen to other people, is I wasn't shooting them very well. And I talked to young Beretta a couple times about, you know, maybe the revolvers just aren't for me. It's a different skill set, and I have to be patient with it as I learn the Dan Wesson here. And if I get this Dan Wesson down, I'm talking about adding a Smith & Wesson 686 down the road here. Six months to a year, I'd like to add another revolver. But I have to learn it first, and I have to be patient. And I'm not shooting it as well as young Beretta, and it's just going to take some time. So... I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that uh, you learned something if you're new to revolvers and if you're thinking about getting a revolver, you know, these are some things that might help you and help you to enjoy the revolver as you're learning it. Don't give up on it right away. Stay with it. Keep practicing with it. It's going to take hundreds of rounds to get it down. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Remember, your second amendment is worth protecting.